Our toll-free number tonight allowing you to bring up whatever happens to be on your mind. It's 855-450 free whether it's theology or gun rights. You can bring up anything here on Free Talk Live. We've also got Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. Our friend Derek J. Freeman writes in his blog post that is at the top of freekeen.com right now. I got a sad letter from my attorney this week, writes Derek. He says he informed me that the Supreme Court of New Hampshire upheld the lower court's decision to deny my application for a license to carry a handgun discreetly. You can read the decision here. And then he links to the three-page long uh, Supreme Court decision. As though Derek J. has ever done anything discreetly. And he says, well, that was fun. Thanks for playing. Please remember to tip your waitress on the way out. $5,000 in legal fees. Endless wow. hours spent in and out of various courts. And for what? A goose egg. Nothing. No justice. No rights. No freedom. This sucks. We'll continue with his comments here. This is Free Talk Live. This is Free Talk Live. Our friend Derek J. Freeman denied his supposed right to protect himself, to bear arms, in this case to conceal carry those arms. We'll tell you more about what happened to him here in a Supreme Court case here in New Hampshire. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You've heard about shall issue? Well, at least here it's total BS because they can deny that shall issue permit so long as they determine that you are unsuitable that's the legal term here that allows them to just you know push whatever they want through the eye of a needle i mean it's just ridiculous the, all they have to do is just claim that you're unsuitable and give some sort of you know lame-o reason as to why we'll, we'll give you some of their reasons why they think our friend Derek jay who's entirely peaceful and responsible with his firearms is unsuitable he can carry them openly so it's not like he's being told he can't have a gun it's not like he's he being just told- can't put the gun under a coat. Correct. Or go into his car with it, apparently, with it loaded, at least, as I understand it. Uh, so we'll get into more of that. Uh, Ian and Mark here in the studio with you tonight. Derek J. Freeman, our friend and former co-host, has been denied his supposed right to conceal carry a firearm in a supposedly shall-issue state. And I'm going to continue his blog post from freekeen.com. It's also over on his site, thederekj.com. He says, these cross-dressing lawyers claim that I am unsuitable to conceal a firearm because I have been involved in two scuffles with law enforcers. Never mind that they attacked me. Never mind that I always have been peaceful. Never mind that I can still legally own and carry a gun. I just can't put it in my pocket, wear a coat over it, or step in my car with it. Sure, that makes sense, he says. It makes no sense at all. Um, I mean, if if you're going to let a person carry a gun, then having them load, uh, having them unload it every time they get into a car, and then presumably load it when they get out of the car, that will look a little scary uns- to people. That's unsafe, and that's going to make people uncomfortable. Yep. Uh, he says, my only takeaway from this 15 month ordeal is that so called rights are a lie. If your freedoms can be restricted by state agents because of personal prejudice then they are not rights. The whole point of a license is to restrict a person's natural freedom and then sell it back to him, or in my case, refuse to sell it back at Mm. all. The ruling doesn't have to make sense. The judges have the power of infinite force on their side, and while they may claim that might does not make right, that is precisely how they operate. And I'd like to add in here uh, the recollection of what happened to Derek J. as far as the police chief's excuses and reasons for denying Derek the right to conceal carry or denying him his license to conceal carry. He basically said that Derek shouldn't be able to conceal carry because he doesn't respect the police enough. That was his reason for for not uh, granting it to it him. It doesn't seem reasonable that you would uh, demand respect, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you may you did not respect us enough. You made a movie, Victimless Crime Spree, where you disrespect the police and you uh, you know you don't do everything that we say when we say to do it. So therefore, you shouldn't be able to defend yourself. That's what's happening here, and that's one of the reasons why he was called unsuitable. And then these judges are backing this guy up. He says these people have no shame, no dignity, and no honor. If they did, they would respect my right as a human being to defend myself. 
and they wouldn't stand in my way of exercising my natural freedoms. But they do, at every opportunity. When I've asked permission of a bureaucrat, the answer undoubtedly comes back, no, you can't. Well, it, why? It does seem to be what they do. <laughs> because am I a bad man? Or I am a bad because I am a bad man? No, he says. Simply because the people with the power don't like that I don't respect their supposed authority. So what now? The answer is obvious to everyone with a freed mind in his head. Ignore these sociopaths who imagine that they own me and peacefully do as I please. Gandhi said the only tyrant I accept is the still, small voice within me. Does their ruling mean that I can't discreetly carry my gun? Certainly not. I'm a free man, free to live my life and use my property so long as I'm not infringing on the rights of others. But Derek, you ask, why did you apply in the first place if you were only going to ignore the ruling anyway? Well, the answer is because I was lied to. I was told that New Hampshire is a shall-issue state and that it would be easy. It's just 10 bucks and a trip to the police department, they said. That, you can see, is not true. I fit the criteria for a concealed carry license, except that the man who called himself the chief used his moment of power to deny me on his way out the door. As yeah, a, he's gone, too. As a final F you before retiring. There will be no consequences for him, nor will there be any consequences for the criminal judges and law enforcers who allow this type of evil to continue. Not just against me, but against the countless others without a voice. Without the $5,000 to drop on an attorney, I would, and that was at reduced rates, by the way. Yeah. Without the popular blog, without the verbal skills or the time to spend articulating their story of injustice. Well, then let th this be my consolation. That you have not stopped me. You have only fueled my passion for justice. I will long outlive you gray-haired tyrants, and I will spend every single waking second of my time on this earth influencing and inspiring young minds with my courage, creativity, and undying commitment to human freedom until the world recognizes you for the thoughtless, controlling brutes you are. You may beat me, cage me, and deny me the freedom that is my birthright, but you will never have my obedience. And that's from our friend Derek J. Freeman. Ultimately, that's what they um, they want, um, ultimately, is they want you not to just do it, but to smile while you do it. And anything less than that is, it's it's just, it's criminal. He probably did smile when he went down and filled out the, uh, the application. Derek is a very friendly, affable individual who he is. He'll always has a smile on his face, or very frequently does. Uh, but the thing is they, that he wasn't obedient enough before that, Mark. Yeah. Uh, he was obediently going ahead and trying to go through the process and get the darn official piece of paper from the state of New Hampshire, as countless other people have been able to do. But because they knew who he was and because he had not done everything the police had demanded of him in the past— he was denied. Now he doesn't live here any longer, so he, he has to. He's under whatever rule that there is in uh, California and San Francisco, which I suspect makes uh, New Hampshire look uh, pretty good, frankly. Um, but there's no doubt New Hampshire is one of the better states. But this just, you know, goes to show that these bureaucrats will take whatever power right. they can get. But um, let me ask you this: the so the rules as they have been uh, handed down at this point. Could he simply go to another town in New Hampshire and get this done, or is that would that now be a violation of these rulings? That's an interesting question. Rich Paul uh, looked at the the court's decision. It's a short, relatively short, three page decision by the Supreme Court, and Rich seems to believe that the the way the decision was written essentially means that it's an open for interpretation by the local police chiefs and judges. So if there's a different police chief or a different judge who hears the case and decides that Derek is suitable. Then the Supreme, then the, essentially the, this is not precedent on on Derek. Okay, so there, so would, there would be nothing still, at all. They're basically the judges was the judges were saying that it's okay that the police chief ruled this way. Yeah, but if another police chief decides to rule another way, then it's fine because he's not barred by law from having a concealed carry permit. So yeah, there you go. and and so essentially one of the things that they say in the ruling is that the Supreme Court. They rely on the trial judge to be the determiner of fact. Okay. So if your trial judge is biased as hell against you, like you could argue Judge Burke is here in Keene. He's uh, certainly seen Derek plenty. You could argue then uh, that, well, uh, my point here is that the, the Supreme Court will not look anew at the evidence in the case. They presume the trial judge got it right in looking at the evidence. And in this case, the Supreme Court... They claimed that, well, Derek had a tussle 
or a scuffle a couple times with a cop, so therefore he's not suitable to have a firearm, even though the cops attacked Derek.